Wow, good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, I'm assuming, just as you are all getting up and starting your day, I'm about to flag it. And uh, so I've only just got home. And um, I've just come home to a great big reminder on how much all these social workers and all these people that have been around me never gave a shit about how I manage my condition. And I hit the first hurdle the moment I got in. When we got up to Dean's, it was really easy. The kids went in the door. I was able to unload the car because the car was parked right outside the door. Now, my boys are up here and we have had a bit of a struggle. I have had to leave one asleep while bringing one up and come down. Report me to social for it. Um, I have already had the stress and worry of my neighbours already going, oh, she's coming in early hours with the kids. So, you know, I can't be asked for that shit anymore. Um, but straight away, the challenge is now, I've got to get my bags out and it's raining. And of course, the boys are upstairs. So these are the challenges that I've been having that people haven't understood and go, oh, she's making such a big deal. No, it's not. Being on your own with two young children. Now, at Dean's house, it's different. If I'd pulled up outside my house and my car was right outside, I could have put the kids on the sofa, left them there, got the bags in, it's not a problem. But this is our dumbass council here. Didn't even think about this stuff for somebody like me. So I'm home, I'm very tired. I did stop for a bit of a sleep on the way. Frick knows how I've got all the way back. I did start to panic at one point thinking my petrol's gonna run out in a bit. Um, but we're home and uh, yeah, I just gotta get my head back in and, and, and focus. It's been really challenging. Uh, me and Dean have been obviously speaking while I've been stopped off uh, along the way. But I just felt for the boys with the chest, in, chest going on and everything like that, that it was just better for them to be here around their own surroundings. Dean's got his own cleaning and decorating to do and I'm going to leave him to that. And if his house is ready by Christmas and he wants us to go up there for Christmas, hallelujah. And obviously he's welcome to come down here for Christmas. Um... But eventually, obviously, I need to be... This is my last time I'm doing this whole me, Dean, and two children um, because they're, I've got so much more to think about. So anyway, it's been a long haul. I've got so much I want to say. A lot of it is going in the book, but I know there's a few of you that would obviously have been in and out of sleep wondering whether I got home safe tonight. I did have one nearly really crazy bit where this lorry was like this all over the road. And I thought, I can't pass him. I don't know whether he's asleep or not. And, um, yeah, it is raining. So am I going to regret this later when Dean messages me to say he's in two, three foot of snow and everything's great? No, I made the right decision. My intuition and everything is screaming at me that I was going to find myself in a situation where my boys were on the inside of the house and I was on the outside. And I'm, I don't care whether it's paranoia, I don't care whether it's an awareness. There are just some risks that are just not worth taking. Do you know what I mean? And when it comes to your children, it's just slightly different. And at the end of the day, the boys have got the dentist on Monday. I didn't feel that I wanted to put that time in. I feel that Dean's got to learn a really fucking hard lesson right now. And it is going to be a really hard lesson. He sent me a lovely painting that he's already done in the time that I've gone out. And he's just put like, you know, obviously, you know, the whole dump head bound angel, broken fallen angel thing with a broken love on it. And it's like, well, you know, this isn't about broken love, is it? This is about broken trust. This is about broken trust. Um... And people go, oh, if you haven't got trust, you haven't got anything. Look, my relationship with Dean is for life, yeah? Them two little boys in there are for life. So those relationships are for life. Even my mum and my dad, it's for life. Aaron and Faith, it's for life. Liam and Daniel, it's for life. Because we don't know what's going to happen in three, four years down the road. Um, just to say as well, on the way back, just a quick feel before I forget... All the roadworks, there was two routes I could have taken to come back. And I decided to take the one where it wasn't letting me go. And my sat-nav kept trying to take me around the road. And I'm going, why is it not letting me going to put me going through Oxford? So I thought, fuck it. And then as it came to the, 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 the sort of roadwork thing on whether to 
go the other route or whether to go the one where I'm going, why is it not taking me down there? Well, obviously, it was a shitload of roadworks, um, but it was completely obvious. Big signs, it says, testing technology. So, and then the other thing I was going to do a live, we were stopped outside a service station just really quick because it's early morning, I don't want to get into it. My boys are in my bed, their duvets are downstairs in the car and I just want to flag out with the boys a minute. And uh, But I just want to say this, I stopped off in a hotel lobby to charge my phone up, right? And when we left, I was sitting in the car thinking, oh, I've got to do a live. But my battery, I was really hoping, I actually lost battery uh, along the journey. I had to drive in blind. But because I keep saying, obviously, it's 150,000 for a legal team, isn't it? But it's 150,000 if you're willing to use your face and your voice for all the robots that are going to be concierges, yeah? So I was going to do a live with you. And I'd, I was talking to the woman who was obviously the concierge for um, uh, the hotel. And I didn't feel that she needed the fear right now. So we didn't have this conversation about it, but I was going to come on and have a conversation with you guys about it. And um, I was just trying to get the emphasis that I was sat outside a hotel, yeah? So for any of you that know, and uh, and you know what a hotel is, and you open the door and you go in and, you, and, and you're met by a receptionist and a concierge, aren't you? And um, unfortunately, they are sort of human robots because... They're not always happy and polite and friendly. Sometimes they are. Here in the UK, we don't have many English ones. They've brought most of the foreigners in to do those sort of jobs because us people, even on benefit system, don't want to get up and go and do them jobs for some reason. I don't mind. I've actually done all concierge job. I've done cleaning. You have no idea what jobs I have done, tried. But at the end of the day, it's about getting the right thing for my body, yeah? So, 150,000 to use my face and my voice. Do you reckon I could explain to AI that I have vocal cord dysfunction and my voice changes up and down as it is? And I don't know whether or not me being five foot two might be a bit issue. They might want all perfect five foot four, whatever it is, women. But anyway, I was going to come on to do a live and I was going to see if I could sort of sit in there like the concierge and see how you all felt about walking through a hotel door and seeing Kelly Carson says, hello, good morning, how was your journey? And could you imagine me going up to the robot going, do you mind if I just plug my charger in? Uh, do not compute, do you mind if I just, yeah, yeah, robot, yeah, you're going to plug my charger in, just, uh, Neat, neat, neat. Because it wouldn't compute with the robot. Now, a human could say, no, you fucking can't sit in here and charge your phone because at the end of the day, you're using my electricity, yeah? But I just thought it was really funny. So anyway, before people start coming on my live and thinking what's going on, as you might know, I left Portsmouth, been up north. I am in speaking with the university about me not going and seeing them today. I will explain why that fear and certainty... I'm just trying to find my laptop charger because it didn't turn up at Dean's and all of a sudden now I can't see it here. Um, and obviously I haven't got my cash card either. One is not trying to accuse anybody of doing anything, paranoia awareness, um, or maybe nothing. But at the end of the day, I made the decision to bring the boys back today. Um, I've got a lot on this week. I need to get on and... Whether or not this is 100% the end of me and Dean in terms of there isn't. I have a feeling it's actually only just the beginning of me and Dean because me and Dean have been absolutely battered for, uh, obviously, the two little ones with social. Um, all that aside, um, yeah, good morning, have a nice day. But I'm now going to bed. <laughs> Naked. I have just done. Don't forget, I left. What time did I leave? Um, it's meant to be a basic six hour drive, and obviously, I stopped and I've had a bit of a rest. But I've used an absolute full tank of petrol, and I'm very tired. But my um, ambition to get on the road and travel hasn't changed. I just need my van still. So, anyway, I'm gonna collapse. I really am. I'm absolutely fucking knackered. So have a really good day. I hope you finish strong this Friday today. So whatever's on your list that you haven't completed, just hopefully you just set yourself free by getting it done this week and having a really nice weekend. 
So, and then obviously join us Thursday for Alan um, and see how that goes. Oh, seriously, I am a robot. I wish I could be right now, like seriously. I'll just plug myself back in. That'd be fucking awesome, wouldn't it? Just two seconds, guys. Can I just, can I, can I just get me plug and plug myself back in and give myself a little bit of a charge just for your end? So should we just, should we just use me here? Yeah, there we go. Charges in. Oh, fantastic. Wouldn't that be so much easier? Not.